So welcome to our free webinar this month. And this is the most profitable phase in aviation marketing. And it's also one of the most overlooked phases in aviation marketing, right, John? Absolutely. Right. Um, a lot of people are always looking for new customers, new customers, new customers, when their old customers are their best source of new business and of revenue, either through referrals, resells, and recaptures. Um, just about any campaign that we run in phase three costs less and has a better return on investment than any other phase. So here are some phase three problems. If you have any of these problems, you know you need to work on your phase three, right? Okay, so one, um, I lost a customer to a competitor, but I don't know why my product is better. If you've had that happen to you, please raise your hand. I just kind of want to see how people are feeling about these and which ones we want to spend more time on. Okay, I have to work hard for each sale, even with uh, established customers. We've got a couple of people have that problem. My customers seem happy, but they never give me testimonials. This was our problem for a long time until we got this figured out, right? Among others, yes. <laughs> right. And uh, I don't get many referrals, and I don't like to ask for them. That was a problem that we had, and it looks like a problem that a lot of you guys have. So uh, we're glad you're here. We're going to solve all these problems. And by the end of the hour, you're going to know how to uh, fix all of this stuff. So I'm Paula Williams. I'm John Williams. And we are ABCI. And ABCI's mission is? To help you sell more products and services in the aviation world. Absolutely. Right. So when we talk about phase three strategies, there's a bunch of things that we're going to be talking about in this hour. Uh, among them are uh, cross-selling, customer appreciation events, new customer welcome packages, satisfaction surveys, referral incentives, communication plans, and fitting this all together, <laughs> right? Um, and we're also going to talk about automating phase three with a CRM. Now, that's a lot to cover in an hour, so we're really going to cruise through this, and then when we do our um, members-only webinar next or next week, we'll drill down to the things that you guys are the most interested in and that our members are the most interested in so that uh, we can cover those in more depth. This so, is a flight level 350 flyby. Exactly. All right. So warning, Rome was not built in a day. Um, don't try to do all of this today. Um, you know, we'd rather have you do one thing really, really well than try and do everything badly. So, you know, what we'd like to have you do is pick one or two of these strategies that you're really interested in and work on implementing those. And then you can always put more into your phase three over time. So we've been working on our phase three for a number of years and we've got a lot of stuff in it. But um, now what do I mean? I keep talking about phase three, right? OK, <laughs> so um, this is what our marketing system looks like or what a textbook marketing system looks like. Um, phase one is advertising and prospecting. Phase two, building credibility and closing sales. Phase three, referrals, resells, and recaptures. Right? You probably need to realize that since this is the free webinar for new people, that yep. they don't know how we do business yet. They don't necessarily know that. So um, I'm glad we're going over this just at a really high level. Now, a lot of marketing firms and companies and a lot of people who don't know a lot about marketing use advertising and marketing almost as synonyms, but that really only covers the first third of what we need to cover in marketing, right? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, that's where most people stop uh, investing in marketing, and that's a bad idea. Exactly. So they end up throwing a lot of money <clears throat> away because if you stop after phase one, you never really get to the point where you make most of your sales, which is after um, building up some credibility and in aviation, we have a longer sales cycle than we do in the rest of the world. So that phase two is really important. And to phase three, which is today's topic, um, referrals, resells, and recaptures, as we mentioned, um, activities that we do here have a higher return on investment than activities that we uh, do in any other phase of a marketing system. Right, John? Absolutely. All right. So some of the things that can go in your phase three, I'll blow this up so you can see it. Um, new customer packages, customer satisfaction surveys, follow-up calls, testimonial requests, thank you gifts, referral incentive packages, weekly emails, 
uh, newsletters, social media conversations, greeting cards for people's birthdays or anniversaries or, you know, whatever, um, semi-annual direct mail promotions. You know, this is just an example of some of the things that can go in phase three. And we're going to talk about some of these things in more detail as we go through the webinar. In general, just because you sold somebody something uh -huh. doesn't mean you shouldn't keep in contact with them on a frequent and regular basis. Frequent it, meaning not every day, maybe not even every week, but at least monthly. Exactly. And this is what really separates, I think, um, really professional companies from those that are just in business to make a buck. Um, you know, if you never hear from a company after they've taken your money, um, you know, you get one impression of that company. If you hear from them uh, on an ongoing basis, it puts you in a completely different category. You become more of a partner and less of a salesperson, right? And you have a contact if you have a question or an issue with the product or service. Absolutely. Right. So let's uh, go ahead and advance from here. All right. So now we know phase one, phase two and phase three and where all that fits together. So um, I'm going to talk in more detail about the phase three strategies. And I'm going to ask you to pick one or two of these and schedule action uh, while you're in this webinar. So before you leave today, <laughs> circle two of these and uh, and, and schedule some, some action to take on these things. So today we're gonna to cover in-depth cross-selling and customer appreciation events. That doesn't mean schedule with us. She just means put it down so you do something about it. Yep, put it on your calendar. If you want to involve us, that's great, but, but basically <laughs> you need to be put it down so that you do something. Are in charge of your marketing, exactly. We're gonna to touch on new customer welcome packages, satisfaction surveys, referral incentives, communication plans, um, fitting this all together and then automating your phase three with a CRM. So um, those first two we're going to talk about in detail. The, the next set we're going to just basically fly over <laughs> and uh, answer any questions that you have and we'll, we'll go pretty quickly. But again, in next week's webinar for members only, we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about and work on some specific examples. So that's kind of how this works. So first, let's talk about cross-selling. Now, most people, when they think about cross-selling, they're thinking about it in a retail environment, like um, the fast food environment. Do you want fries with that? Which was one of the most successful upsell campaigns of all time, and that was actually McDonald's, right? Yes, it's very rapidly went over to every, every one of the other fast food places. Right, and then it became supersized that, uh -huh. which became a whole movie and everything else. So it's the same mindset, but you want to think um, about your company in terms of what can you do to serve your customer better? Because some of your folks are not going to be satisfied with your standard offering. What can you offer them that is more, better, cooler, neater, more convenient, faster, um, any of those adjectives that your customers wish that it was? Uh, and if you have to charge more for that, that's fine, uh, but make that an option. Um, and the reason that this works even better in aviation than it does in the rest of the world is because the kind of customers that we have are not satisfied with the average offering, right? Um, if you're in high school or college or whatever, if you're in a starving college student and, um, you know, you'll go to the dollar store and buy shampoo, you know, and you'll just put up with the fact that it smells weird and it's not quite what you want and, and all of those things. So you'll buy anything from anybody at the cheapest possible price. But as you go up this pyramid, you become more particular about who you want to buy things from and about what attributes those things that you buy should have, right? Um, you become much more picky <laughs> um, up to the point where, you know, when you're in the mass market, mass affluent, high net worth, and our ultra high net worth clients are very particular about what they buy and from whom. And if we can offer them more services or better services, they would rather buy from us who we already know, like, and trust than go out and find another vendor uh, and they're not gonna be shopping on price. So you're gonna do much, much better even than the, uh, the retail and the other types of, of environments if you do cross-selling and upselling. So a question you should ask is, while we're doing that, what can we add? So if you've got an airplane in for service, um, you know, obviously they're not flying it. What else can you do 
for that customer that would add convenience and would help them. Um, so, you know, let's say you they bring it in for an annual inspection or something like that. Uh, maybe upgrade their avionics, maybe detail the interior, maybe do some paint work, maybe do some body work. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you could that would be options that you could add. And while their airplane is out of service, they might as well get other things done. And maybe you don't offer detailing, but maybe someone else at your airport does. So you could do a, uh, um, a nice cross promotion with another business at your airport. Um, so think about, you know, when your customer buys your product or service, what else are they going to be in the market for at the same time, right? Okay, upselling. Um, again, we're talking about a market that um, always wants better, faster, more, cooler, cheaper, you know, and so on. So if you can add some other service like ground transportation, dry cleaning, um, you know, picking up their pets from, <laughs> you know, any other personal services, those usually are, are really good fits with, uh, with aviation. And typically don't cost you that much. Exactly, exactly. But they really appreciate make, being able to make one call and having you become the concierge for their life. <laughs> one company that's become really, really good at that is uh, Special Services in South Carolina. Um, it's, you know, the way that they treat every single customer has become pretty, uh, pretty amazing. And they, they are really good at ferreting out other things that they can do to really help a customer save time and, and, and energy and everything else. Another thing you can do is downselling. So, you know, if you're having um, maybe some issues with a customer that is um, overbought in their airplane or, or something along those lines, and you think you're going to lose them, you can offer them something that is less expensive, like a jet card um, or um, a fractional service or something like that. So, you know, there are ways to split the cost among multiple customers uh, to do a, a downsell and still offer them what they really need. So um, think about what the options are. If you have just one product, uh, you know, you're not gonna be serving that upscale market quite as well as you would otherwise. All right, so um, factors to consider. You know, think about what does the customer really want or need? You know, the old saying is customers don't buy, um, a, they don't wanna buy a hand drill, they wanna buy the holes, right? They need to make holes in something. <laughs> so they're buying the solution. They're not, uh, they're not actually buying your product. What else can I offer in addition to the product or service that you currently offer? And what partnerships can you make in order to make good referrals to provide some of those services that maybe are outside of your forte? You know? um, so you can think about those kinds of things. And let's talk about some questions about cross-selling. You can type these into your chat window. Um, or raise your hand or, you know, whatever is the most convenient for you. And John will facilitate those for us. Of course I will. Oh, of course he will. Um, where can I, where can I find partners for cross-selling? Okay. Um, first of all, I would look at your airport, um, you know, for local people, if you're a, um, an on-site kind of a service, if you are not a, an on-site kind of a service, then you may want to look at, uh, of course, the Aviation Marketing Masterclass is a fantastic place to look for cross-sell opportunities because those are all people who are interested in marketing. So um, in some cases, you may find folks who are um, interested in talking about projects you can work on together where you can offer a joint product or something like that. Um, your Chamber of Commerce, you know, there's lots of places to look for those opportunities. Uh, are people annoyed when you try to sell them something else? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, I used to tell my son when he was a teenager, you can say anything that you want to say. It's usually just a matter of how you say it, right? Um, so if, you, if you're doing this in a considerate way and you're looking at it from the customer's point of view of, you know, while this is going on, how about if we add this uh, to your service? Would that save you time um, if we did that for you? And in most cases, they'll say yes. And in most cases, they'll appreciate you being thoughtful. Um, you know, if you're being obnoxious about it, then, of course, they're not going to like it. Okay. Do you have a formal commission agreement? Um, should you have a formal commission agreement when you're um, doing a cross-promoted product or something like that? 
um, you can, you know, you can have those kinds of things like a lot of our charter companies have relationships with ground transportation or with bed and breakfast or with, you know, other organizations where they get a commission for referring someone to that organization. And that is perfectly fine, but it's not necessary. In some cases, those do just fine being informal, where you give them some business, they give you some business, and it all works out. But if you're giving them a lot of business, you probably do want to think about formalizing that into some kind of an agreement. But mostly you just want to work with people that you trust to treat your customers well is the most important thing, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so um, let's talk about customer appreciation events. Now, the goal of customer appreciation events is to get referrals and testimonials. And, you know, it sounds like you're doing this completely out of the gratitude of your heart since you are very, very happy that they are working with you and being your customers. And that is true. But it is also true that you can get more referrals and testimonials from having a customer appreciation event. So um, the way to do that best, we found, is if you have kind of a mix of people that you invite to a customer appreciation event. So you don't just invite customers, you also invite prospects. So if you have about a 75-25 split of um, three quarters of the people that you invite are, are past or current customers, and 25% of the people that you invite are prospects, what you're gonna do is immerse those prospects in an environment of raving fans of people who know, like, and trust you and who are, of course, going to talk about your product or service uh, while they're in that event. And let me give you an example. This was last year uh, at Bell's event at uh, NBAA. They had, um, it was in Orlando, and they had uh, some vans take people to their customer appreciation event at downtown Disney. And so, you know, they had a lot of different photo opportunities and things and roped off areas and they fed us dinner and they had a live band and, you know, all kinds of, of wonderful things. You don't have to go this crazy with it. You know, if you're a smaller company and you don't have the kind of resources that Bell Helicopters does, of course, uh, you wouldn't want to do this. But just using this as an example, they had about that mix of people. And so you'd listen to people who are informally milling around, getting food, uh, talking to each other. Um, you know, interacting with the Disney characters and things like that. And they're all talking about how much they love their helicopters. So people like us who have not yet bought a helicopter <laughs> are very impressed uh, by the fact that they are talking to people who know, like, and trust Bell Helicopters. And there's a lot of people we can ask questions of, you know, very specific questions about, um, you know, different applications and um, different features of the helicopter that we may not have known about. And and may not know to ask. So, um, and another thing that they did that I thought was incredibly smart is they um, they put together some photo opportunities with the Disney characters, and they handed out the photos with these. Um, I'm not sure what you would call them. Uh, graphics on the bottom of the the photo. So when they printed the photos, it had this on there. Uh, and then you can also share those on social media and things like that. So it was really cool. And it made sure that whenever you shared this photo, it also shared the Bell helicopter name and the Disney's Hollywood Studios name. So, of course, there's some cross marketing going on there. And it really encouraged people to share these on social media because it was fun and it was neat and it was cool and all of those things. So you can recreate a lot of those features without using that kind of budget. So, you know, if you're a smaller company, and I'm guessing, um, if you raise your hand, if you are not as big as Bell, okay, almost everybody on the call is not quite as big as Bell, and I totally understand that. We are not either. So, you know, here are some things that you can do. And again, if you print the handouts, you'll have all of these. Um, I'm not going to go through them all, and this is way too many words for a slide, but just some different ideas of things that you could do, whether you have 10 people or... Um, 20 people, 30 people, 50 people, um, you know, whatever is appropriate for the number of folks that you have and the amount of money that you can actually spend on a customer appreciation event. All right. So, you know, there's lots of things that that you can do with a small, medium and large budget. And I'm sure you guys have questions. So let's carry on with that. Speaking of budgets. <clears throat> yeah. 
how do we determine how much we should budget? <laughs> that is a really good question. All right. So um, obviously, if you're not selling helicopters, you're not going to spend as much as Bill. So on the other hand, if you're selling Airbuses, on the other hand, if you're selling Airbuses, you're going to spend more than Bell. Um, there are two calculations that um, we typically use, and I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about this just in the interest of, of time. Uh, but these two things are customer lifetime value. Uh, and the way that you ca calculate your customer lifetime value, they sometimes abbreviate this as CLV. Uh, is the amount of money that the average customer spends with you over the average lifetime that a customer has with your company. So as an example, and these are completely not accurate numbers, but let's say somebody um, uh, becomes a, a member of our consulting group and they spend, you know, just to make the, the math easy, let's say they spend that $5,000 a month for eight months, um, and that's an average, um, or two years, or three years, or you know whatever the uh, whatever the length of time is that they typically stay with us at that level of service. So you take the average amount that they spend times the amount of times that they spend it, and that becomes your customer lifetime value, and that's usually a number that's higher than you would anticipate, um, but what a customer appreciation event does is it, you spend some fraction of that. Um, and we recommend a higher fraction usually than people would think of <laughs> just because you're more likely to increase your customer lifetime value because they're likely to stay with you longer. If you're doing a lot of these customer appreciation things. Uh, the other thing is the, the value of any testimonials that they give you and the value of any referrals that they give you, is equal to that customer lifetime value of that new person that they refer to you. Does that make sense? Or if you buy a Lear or a Gulfstream every three years, those numbers are significantly higher mm -hmm. and therefore your CLV is also much higher and they can afford to spend therefore much more on these sorts of things. Exactly. But if you sell like a $500 component and it's a one-time sale, um, you know, then of course your customer lifetime value is only going to be $500. Um, chances are that that person will rebuy at some point in the future or will buy it for a new airplane or will refer people to you. So it's still worth doing a customer appreciation event, but you're not going to spend nearly as much money on it. So in that case, you might want to just do like a dinner at a local restaurant or, you know, something along those lines or just meet them for dinner uh, when you do a convention. Uh, and you're in the same city as they are, you know, that reduces your travel cost. Um, and all you're doing is buying them dinner. Uh, so, you know, you need to do something, I think, for every customer that you have that spends money with you to let them know uh, that you appreciate them. And, you know, that just makes them a lot more likely to give you uh, testimonials, referrals and, and other kinds of things. OK, one more. Yeah. Aside from customers, mm -hmm. how do I determine whom to invite? Okay, and this is where that lead scoring comes into to play. Um, you want to invite any recent prospects, and especially the ones who are interacting with your website a lot, who are opening all of your emails, um, you know, the people who seem the most interested and that meet your qualification criteria. Um, and we, we talked about qualification criteria last month when we were talking about building credibility and closing with customers. And the three factors in qualification or, you know, when you're qualifying a prospect are, do they have an interest in your product or service, right? Um, do they have the money or the resources? And do they have the authority to make a purchasing decision? So if two or three of those factors are, you can answer for sure, yes, they are a qualified prospect, then it becomes much more worth the money to invite them to a customer appreciation event as a prospect and have them hobnobbing with your happy customers, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Did that answer the question? Are there any more? Um, I think you, well, you answered the question and I don't see any more yet. <laughs> okay, cool. We got a quiet bunch today. This is, this is something. I don't know if you guys are awake or if you are, um, 
Anyway, if you could raise your hand if you are awake, just to, to make sure. we got a couple of people asking questions, but it's the same ones all the time. Thank you. All right, just making sure we're still broadcasting. I'm a little paranoid that way. All right, carrying on. New customer packages. We have, um, this is a package that John got when he got his brand new baby airplane. Uh, well, that was part, no, that was all of it, actually. Mm -hmm. um, all the little gizmos, the flashlight, the key fob, and the thing in the back was a cleaning kit. And what you don't see is a CD of all the pictures they took. And I think I even got a copy of the test flight acceptance checklist and so on, but whatever. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this is because when you make a purchase and you just parted with a, a, a whole lot of money, uh, in this process and you go home and or you go back to your office and you don't have anything to show the people back at the office because your airplane is is at, uh, at the airport and things like that. But you want people to talk to their friends, neighbors, coworkers and so on about a purchase that they just made because they're probably really excited about it. So Cessna does a really good job of putting these conversation starters into their new customer welcome packages. Um, obviously those airplane pictures are going to go on your desk, you know, at least for the first few days after you've, you've purchased an airplane and everybody's going to come by and say, congratulations. It's almost like having a new baby, right? Um, so it kind of makes a social event out of this purchase and makes a big deal out of it. Um, you also have the keychain, uh, you know, that you're going to pull out of your pocket and think about every time you pull your keys out of your pocket. Oh yeah, I just bought a new airplane. <laughs> And uh, that has a, a flashlight on it, and it's really kind of cool. Um, they also, I think there's a pen set and some other things. Um, one really important thing is a laminated card. And this is something that everyone can do, is create a laminated card with a customer ID number, um, the number that you call if you have any problems, you know, for customer service and things like that. It's just a way of making people feel really cared for and, you know, knowing where to call and, and what to do when a problem comes up. And she said, this is my airplane magically. However, it became hers. Exactly. This is Charlie, um, November 6208 Charlie, which is the airplane that I learned to, to fly in. And uh, it's fantastic. But the point is, no matter what you sell, you want to put something tangible in the hands of your client as soon as they part with their money. Um, it kind of gets over that buyer's remorse and it also makes them a lot more likely to give you referrals, testimonials and other kinds of things because they happen naturally because you become part of their, op the, their office environment, part of their uh, life habits and, and so on. All right. So um, let's talk about customer satisfaction surveys. Here are two questions that really should be on your customer satisfaction survey if you have one. And if you don't have a customer satisfaction survey, you really should think about uh, putting one together and sending it out every time you, you make a sale. Now, the first one is, how likely is it that you would recommend ABCI to a friend or colleague? And of course, you'd substitute your own company name uh, in that. And, you know, you have a zero to five or a one to 10 or whatever the, uh, the appropriate rating is there. And when you get one of these back with a really high rating, you know, that gives you a, an inclination that this might be somebody that you want to give a call to and say, um, you know, thank you very much for filling out our survey. And, and uh, you know, you mentioned that you uh, would recommend our services to a friend or a colleague. Is there anyone that you had in mind when you read that question? Or is there anybody that uh, that we could follow up with and maybe send an information package to. And people are usually really receptive to that, right, John? Oh, yes. Right. And then uh, the other one is, may we use your comments and remarks in our marketing materials? And, uh, you know, typically the question before, question nine, do you have any other comments, questions, or concerns? This is where they're going to say, love the experience, very smooth, terrific. You know, they're going to say something. Um, if they really like what you've done for them. And then that question number 10 just automatically gives you permission to just copy that out and put it on your social media, put it on your website, put it in your brochures, use it everywhere that you possibly can, because those testimonials are super important. Um, they're what we call social proof in making sure that, um, you know, any new customers that come along will see that you already have some very successful, happy um, relationships with people. 
All right, here's another referral incentive package that um, one of our clients used uh, that was, I think, kind of intriguing. It's basically a bounty. Um, wanted tail numbers of piston or turbine aircraft flying in northern in the northern states or Canada without a preheat system. Now this actually becomes kind of a safety issue. So you know people see it more as a service than they do as a, a sales opportunity. So when people see something like this, they may think, oh my goodness, you know my uh, my friend, my neighbor, my hangar mate, my you know whatever uh, doesn't have a preheat system. I really should. Um, talk to them about a TANIS preheat system. And I should, uh, um, you know, let them know that this is an important issue. So that's a, a pretty key item and it's a pretty cool way of doing it. What they have is a, a form on their website where people can go in and enter the tail number and, you know, the name and phone number of the person that owns the airplane. And then TANIS will send coffee uh, to both people um, or a coffee card to both people so that uh, it kind of ties in with their preheat system service and so on. All right, um, another thing that we want to talk about is like a, a regular email um, that you can send to your customers. Um, some of these could be like a tip of the week or something like that where you are helping people understand more about the product or service that they, service that they just bought. Um, as an example, you know, we buy software, we buy a ton of software, and some of this software has a lot of different features that we didn't know we could use. Um, so it's really, we may be spending a lot of money on it and think it's, it's terribly expensive, but that's because we don't know or we're not using it to its fullest capacity. Uh, it could be that your, your product or service that you're offering is also more valuable then your customer knows because they're not using it right. So, you know, if you can send a tip of the week or a did you know that a uh, little factoid about your product or service that really emphasizes the value to them after the purchase, uh, that really helps a lot. And this doesn't have to be a long sequence. It could be even three or five emails of uh, a tip of the week after they've made the purchase. And John, this kind of drives you crazy, doesn't it? <laughs> when you buy something and you keep getting surveys and emails. So how much is too much? Well, I don't expect a survey every time there's an interaction. Right. Yeah. I think that's too much as well. Um, it depends. If they've interacted for several months, I don't know, probably what quarterly. Mm -hmm. I, I would be okay with that. For surveys and then for like a tip of the week. Emails, you know, those are fairly non-invasive and. Sure, as long as they're not repeats. Yeah, exactly. So make sure there are no repeats in your sequence. But uh, otherwise, as long as it's useful information and fairly short, uh, you know, I think one a week is, is not too much for those. Um, another thing you can do is a printed newsletter. And a lot of people think, well, everything's online these days. Nobody reads paper. But we have found the opposite to be true. You know, whatever everybody else is doing, you want to do the opposite, <laughs> right? Absolutely. Particularly in aviation, they uh, tend to like to have something in your hands to read. Right. Exactly. And, you know, since our target demographic is over 40, um, college educated, you know, and so on. If you look at the studies of, you know, what media people find the most credible that demographic finds things that are printed and that they receive in the mail to be a lot more credible than things that they receive in emails or, or electronic um, format of any kind, so social media or whatever. So we really think that doing a, a printed newsletter is still worth it, and we're still doing one ourselves because uh, it's, it's very much worth it to us. Uh, another thing that you can do is social media interactions. Um, if someone has purchased your product, especially if it's a significant product, uh, you want to connect with them on social media. Uh, and, you know, this is about relationships, not just about money. Right. So you want to to get to know these folks. You want to find out what their their problems are. You can find out a lot about what groups they're in on LinkedIn, uh, as an example. Um, you know, what companies they've worked for in the past. So you can find out a little bit more about their background and other things that you might be able to suggest as 
uh, possibilities for referrals and, and, and testimonials and so on. So the better you get to know these people, the more likely you are to uh, make repeat sales and also get referrals and testimonials. So if they're connected with you on social media and they see something come out on your site and they agree with it, they're going to like it, which in a sense is like a mini, mini testimonial, right? Yep. And all it takes is for them to, to click a button. Uh, and that really adds to, to the social proof of your product or service being something that other people are going to enjoy. So, um, and also they're, they're very likely to add comments and say, yeah, when you did that for me, it was great. Um, you know, when they see something about something that you did for another customer. So they like to, to share those, those kinds of experiences. And it's easy for them to do if they're already hanging out on social media. Here's another thing that we like to do, and this is a, um, these would be physical cards that you physically get in the physical mail with an actual stamp that you've taken a pen and you've written um, something inside the card and on the, um, you know, written their address and so on. So if you can once a month, just get a bunch of birthday cards, you know, with your logo on them or without, uh, and, send them to everybody who's going to be having a birthday that month. It doesn't have to arrive exactly on their birthday. So, you know, this can be a kind of a batch job that you can do as a company, pass them around, get everybody to sign them, things like that. People don't get birthday cards that much anymore. Um, and if they get one from you, it's going to stand out a lot more. You can also do thank you cards, you know, thank you for making a purchase, um, you know, thank you for your testimonial, thank you for your referral, absolutely. Some of the larger companies even did this. I used to fly around the world quite a bit, mm -hmm. and I had one year where I had a Hertz rental car every single day of the year. <laughs> they were sending me birthday cards for years after that. <laughs> exactly. So it just lets them know, you know, that you think they're important, you appreciate their business, you enjoy working with them, you know, all of those things that uh, that make business worthwhile, right? Um, and you know, a lot of people will just thank people for a referral either on the phone or by email. I really think if somebody gives you a referral, you really should send them a physical card in the mail, if not a fruit basket or, or something. They depending really on, you know, once they sign up, depending on the cost of what you're going to, mm -hmm. your revenue stream, and then you should, the larger it is, the larger the gift should be. Exactly. Because those really are worth a lot to you, even just, um, you know, psychologically, you know, knowing that somebody is has the faith in you to give you a referral um, is really worth some attention. All right, so um, here's another thing, some direct mail packages. This was at Halloween. You can see we used a lot of Halloween stickers and uh, candy in these. Uh, we really like doing these on Halloween and Valentine's Day. Uh, now, why those two holidays as opposed to Christmas and you know uh, Easter and so on? The reason is because they are almost equally distant from each other. You know, they're on equal ends of the uh, of the calendar. There's not a whole lot of, of other things going on right then. Halloween is before people have been inundated with holidays, and we haven't had Thanksgiving and, and Christmas yet. Uh, they're less likely to be getting a ton of mail. They're not getting all the Christmas ads and things like that yet. And also, Halloween candy is cheap, and it's always appreciated. <laughs> So you can almost always design some kind of a campaign around direct mail, um, even if it's just a thank you. Thank you for being our customer um, and, you know, including some some candy and a nice letter and and some things like that. And maybe some updates about your company, some new products that you have that they maybe haven't purchased yet and so on. Uh, same thing for Valentine's Day. Um, you can do Valentine's candy. You can do stickers. You can do, you know, we love our customers. You know, there's lots of things that you can do that are, are ways to play off those holidays that really make your customers notice that uh, that you're different from everyone else, right? Yes. Right. So the big corporations don't do this sort of thing, but people who have high net worth customers that really appreciate them, this is the sort of thing that that uh, that really makes them notice that you're you have a relationship and not just a you're not just a vendor. All right. So questions about phase three activities. Um, huh. Good question. How do you find out when people's birthdays are? <laughs> How do you find out when people's birthdays are? That is, um, there are two ways. 
Um, one is social media. You know, if you're connecting with with people on social media, um, as a matter of of course, you know, when when someone makes a um, a purchase, that should be part of your checklist um, as you go through. We have a new customer. Here are the things we need to do to to set them up and everything else. You want to connect with them on social media, and you'd be amazed how many people's birthdays with the year and everything are on Facebook. Um, we don't advise that, you know. I mean, just for identity purposes, and you know, identity theft is a problem. So, if your own birthday is is visible on uh, on social media, you may want to think twice about showing that. Um, especially the year, but you'd also be really amazed at how many people's birthdays are out there. Second thing is you can ask them in your documentation somewhere as part of your process, um, just for their birth month uh, and day. You don't have to ask for the year. And most people will just give it to you. So that's easy. And here's uh, another good one. How do we determine how much to budget for new customer packages and secondarily referral packages. Okay, same thing. Um, you know, you want to figure out your customer lifetime value, and then you're going to have to guess a percentage for each of these activities. So if this is the only phase three activity you have, like all you do is a customer appreciation event, then you put um, all of your phase three budget into that one event. If you want to split that out among multiple activities, which I do recommend that you do over time, um, then you're going to want to split that out. And you're going to say, OK, so how much should I budget for phase three altogether? Right. For most companies that are established and have a lot of customers, we usually recommend that they take their whole marketing budget and they split split it 50 50 uh, between phase one. And then the other 50 between phase two and three. So you're, you've got a 50 on phase one and then another 50 split between phase two and phase three. So depending on the, the age and size of your company and how many old customers you have, you can kind of figure out from then whether you want to do 25, 25 in your phase two and three um, or have some other kind of um, kind of split. But the older and more established company you are, the more money you want to spend on phase three and uh, the more events that you want to split that money out over. Does that make sense? You're asking me? <laughs> yeah, I'm asking you. <laughs> of course You're the it money makes guy. sense. <laughs> of course it makes sense. Okay. And the person that asked the question, um, if you could raise your hand, if that makes sense. Fantastic. Okay. We're good. Anything else? Other uh, questions? Nope. Nope. No other questions? We're good so far. Good so far. Okay. All right. So um, once again, let's let's kind of talk about this because this did get a little bit complicated. So you're going to split 50-50 between phase one and the other 50 between phase two and three. So then you can split that second 50 into 25-25 or, or whatever it might be. And then if you have one event in phase three or one activity in your phase three, then you're going to put all of your money on that. If you have more than one activity, then you're just going to have to figure that out um, in math that is more complicated than we're going to go into today, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So that works. And now we know how this all fits together and uh, about what, what happens here. Okay. Let's talk about putting this all together and using a CRM. Um, if you are using a CRM, there are two things that I want you to pay attention to. Um, one is an account summary. Almost every CRM has an account summary um, where you can see how much this person has spent with you. And uh, there is a, an algorithm that people use who are really, really fantastic customer service on the ball folks that pops up on their screen when they're talking to you on the phone. And John, I know you know exactly what I'm talking about, because whenever you call American Express, um, they say, thank you for using American Express, Mr. Williams. We know exactly <laughs> who you are. We know how long you've been with us, and we know how much you spend with us. They don't say it quite exactly that way. but Yes, they knew. They, they, because we're in marketing, I know when I call them and I start doing this, they've got the CRM popped up in front of me. In fact, it pops open when the telephone rings, so they already know who it is. 
<laughs> exactly. So this way you can kind of, you can prioritize, you know, you know what your customer lifetime value is for a particular customer and you know who is paying your, your salary and who is buttering your bread. Um, so when this person calls and asks for something a little bit out of the ordinary, uh, it's going to be a different situation than somebody that spends less money. You know, and in this case, it's just a, uh, a number out of the blue uh, that I pulled up from one of our CRMs. So this is a person that spent $1,836 with us over some amount of time. And uh, so, you know, this is a person that uh, um, I kind of have an idea of which products he's bought and so on. And I can see that at a glance. Another thing is a lead score. Um, some of the CRMs have this feature and what it is, is it shows how many of your emails they're opening, how many times they're visiting your website, if you have that enabled and if you have the, the coding on your website that um, allows that to be tracked. So if someone has a really low lead score, like this person has one out of five flames, and this is using Infusionsoft, then I can tell this is somebody who is not terribly engaged with us. You know, They're not visiting our website and they're not opening every single email. So this might be somebody that I'd wanna call by phone and say, you know, did your email change or, you know, is there something going on that we should know about? You know, I just wanted to check in with you and see how things are going because, um, you know, it looks like maybe our, uh, our materials aren't getting through or, you know, it looks like maybe you're getting busy with something else. Or in one case, we saw something like this happen and that person had left the company and had assigned uh, ownership of, of, what we were consulting about to somebody else. And we didn't even know until we saw that lead score drop. So, you know, that's just kind of a, a way of, of paying attention to your customers and understanding how much you should spend on your phase three activities and uh, how to, to put this all together, right? So another thing you can look at is what have they read? Okay, so when you're putting together those communication plans, um, and you put together maybe those uh, tip of the weeks, uh, things like that. You can see which ones more people are clicking on and which ones are getting ignored and do more of what people like and less of what people don't. So, you know, if you're sending out three surveys and by the third survey, nobody's opening them, then uh, you know <laughs> that you're sending too many surveys, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So we can make all of the assumptions in the world, but uh, what really shows us what's going on is, is the data in our CRM, right? Okay. So back to our uh, um, checklist here, we want to pick one or two of these items and schedule action before you leave today. You know, which ones of these are things that you want to add to your company's phase three uh, marketing system. And uh, there are lots of things to do. If you are just starting out, you know, you may want to start with just a customer appreciation event. And that's all you do in your phase three. That will still be a thousand times better than last year when you didn't do a customer appreciation event, right? Um, or you may want to just pick, let's just do a tip of the week. If you have absolutely no money uh, to spend on this, there are things that you can still do uh, to make this work and to make your your phase three actually a little more useful than it was before. All right, so let's go back to the, the problems that we were trying to solve when we showed up at this webinar. And I want you to raise your hand if you have some ideas of what to do about each of these problems. Uh, I lost a customer to a competitor, but I don't know why. My product is better. Uh, the answer to that is you probably didn't stay in touch with your customer. <laughs> So um, I see some hands going up. It looks like we have some thoughts on how to solve that problem. All right. Uh, second one, I have to work hard for each sale, even with established customers. Now you've got lots of venues to keep in touch with them and uh, can make those, those second and third sales much more easily. My customers seem happy, but they never give me testimonials. I have some ideas about how to do that. It looks like you do, great. So um, that is fantastic. You can use those surveys like we had talked about uh, to kind of spur those testimonials. You can use those customer uh, appreciation events um, and you can also connect with them on social media. And uh, you know, typically people that interact are people that we interact with. 
So those things happen. Um, I don't get many referrals and I don't like to ask for them. Now you have some some ways to, for, of asking for them. And we talked about some Halloween events or um, or Valentine's events. Those are both good times to send out um, a thank you for your referrals or a we would love your referrals or we are scared we're not going to get referrals from you, you know, for the Halloween event, things like that. Um, those are things that, that you can do to solve all of those problems. All right, so questions about organizing and managing phase three activities and solving those problems. So we talk about CRM. So this gentleman asks, what are some good CRMs? Good CRMs. Um, so what do you call good? <laughs> exactly. It depends on what you need to do with it. Um, if you're talking good as in inexpensive or if you're talking good as in full of features, um, we'll kind of start with a, a low end and then a middle of the road and then a high end. Um, low end would be something like um, active CRM um, or active campaign. Active campaign actually is probably my favorite of the low budget CRMs right now. Uh, it seems to have a lot of features. It seems to be fairly easy to use and it is certainly better than using nothing. And it starts at free, which is pretty good price. <laughs> And then, of course, they've got their $9.99 version and their $29.99 version and, and so on, um, depending on what features you use. But I would say, you know, if you if the choice is between using nothing and um, using a free CRM active campaign is a good one to start with. And then you can always add features if you decide you need some reporting and and other things that the free version doesn't have. Um, and those are monthly charges, right? Yeah, those are monthly charges. Um, so once you get up above a certain number of contacts in your CRM, or if you want certain features that are kind of locked uh, unless you upgrade. Um, but it's certainly better than using nothing because it does let you do the web forms and it does let you do a lot of the things that, that we talked about, keeping track of who you've sent packages to, who you've sent emails to, you know, all of those things that we've talked about today. Um, going up the scale, if you need to do lead scoring and um, other kinds of reporting, um, or if you have complicated, um, a complicated situation where you have more than one product or more than one salesperson and you need to do some if then kinds of things. So you don't want to send the same email to somebody twice if they buy a product twice, uh, those kinds of things. Then you want to use something like Infusionsoft that has a lot of programming power behind it. But the problem with with those kinds of things is that it does run into some money. I think that starts at one ninety nine or two ninety nine. Yeah, I believe it's one ninety nine for their for their entry basic, level. Right. Okay, one ninety nine a month, uh, two ninety nine a month, and and up from there. Um, going up the scale from that, Salesforce is kind of the Cadillac of CRMs. And salespeople love it because it has a lot of really great reports and it's really easy for your salespeople to use. Uh, and it's also really easy to figure out like multiple levels of commissions. If you have people that do that begin a sales process and assist, assist someone else so they get part of a commission, if you have to figure out complicated things like that, then Salesforce is definitely the way to go. Would you agree? Well, maybe. Maybe? It Certainly depends because their marketing interface isn't all it should be yet. They're, they're working on it, but uh, I would suspect that places like Boeing and Bell Helicopters probably use Salesforce. Right, um, and Salesforce just bought a marketing automation product called Pardot or Pardo, depending on where you pronounce it in English or French. P A R D O T, uh, but it's not terribly well integrated yet. So um, if you need the marketing automation, but you like the features of Salesforce, then you're kind of in a quandary because it's not really, really well integrated yet. And um, I'd say Salesforce is the best tool for salespeople and Infusionsoft is the best tool for marketing automation. And those two don't interact very well. So it's kind of a quandary. Any other questions? And I think you've answered this, but can a CRM send mail? Can a CRM send mail? They don't say email or mail, so. Mm. I think this was a question from somebody that wanted to automate their mail, um, you know, like birthday cards and things like that. And the answer is no. 
but um, you can get your CRM to print out a um, like a set of mailing labels for your July birthdays or your um, April birthdays. And then all you have to do is slap those onto envelopes. So yes and no, it can help you with some of those batch processes like birthday cards or anniversary cards and things like that. So that becomes easier, but it's not actually going to generate pieces of paper that you can stick in the mail. <laughs> it's not quite that advanced yet. Okay, that's all. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, right, that's all. Okay, so coming up next month, we're going to be talking about branding. And branding really, you know, a lot of people have different definitions of it, but it really is just what people think when they think of you. So a company can have a brand. You know, what do you think about when you think of Coca-Cola as an example? Coca-Cola. <laughs> okay. Or Nike. You know, if you think about Nike, you might be thinking about the, depending on who you are and what you've been reading in the news, you might be thinking about the latest sports scores, or you might be thinking about the scandals with um, African workers. You know, you may be thinking about a lot of different things. So all of that kind of adds up to what goes into a brand and companies have brands, products have brands and people have brands and every interaction that you have uh, either builds, reinforces, or reinforces or destroys that brand, right? Uh, when you're traveling internationally and you see the Coke brand, it's really nice to know that you can actually get an American drink. Yeah. So, you know, that brand is nostalgia. You know, it's a lot of things that happen besides fizzy sugar water, right? Okay, they've done a really good job of doing that. So um, as you know, this is a free webinar and it is part of our aviation marketing masterclass. And, uh, you know, we offer the masterclass to people who are interested in topics like this one. So um, what we want to get out of the masterclass and what you may want to get out of of your job or your life um, is a more robust, predictable, measurable, and stable marketing system by doing one thing each month. Like today we talked about our phase three marketing system and some different activities that we can add to our phase three marketing system. As we know, you know, Rome isn't built on a day, so it takes a lot of work and it takes a team of people that you can lean on. And um, what you get in the masterclass is you get people who are really, really good at some of these things that uh, maybe, you know, I'm personally not all that great at. So some of the technology uh, gets so complicated and there's so many different diverse things that we need to do that um, it becomes really hard to be up to speed on LinkedIn and WordPress and SEO and all of those things. So having a team of people, even if you don't have a team in your company, you can have a team uh, with the masterclass. Um, you also get our help, much less expensive, uh, expensively than consulting. ABCI charges $2,000 a day plus travel and expenses when we do individual consulting for for companies, and uh, you know, which is great when we're working on a campaign for a, for a company. We like to have that devoted time to work together, and it's great. We sit around and um, in a room together and do that work. But we don't always have that luxury, and you may not always have the, the, the time and money to do one-on-one uh, -on -one consulting. So that's why we built the masterclass, is to put some aviation marketing and sales professionals together uh, in one place, because we know that success is about what you know and about who you know. And in a lot of cases, we've talked about co-marketing agreements where you can split the cost of getting something done or improve your credibility by associating with someone else. Um, and you can really save a lot of time, money, and reputation uh, by running things by somebody else before you put it out there or you know, by working together on a lot of these things. We also focus on what's relevant. So there's a lot of marketing programs out there on the web nowadays. It's just kind of a wash in information, but it's really hard to figure out what's gonna work in aviation and what's not going to work in aviation, right? We have a weird, weird market here. Okay. Uh, we also don't ever want to reinvent hot water. So if somebody else has figured out a great way of doing something and they share it. Uh, that happens a lot in the masterclass. This is people who uh, really enjoy helping other folks and learning one thing at a time and 
handling one task at a time, which is great. So uh, to in introduce you to a few of the people in the masterclass, Bert Boda uh, is our Facebook group facilitator. Uh, he does member highlights. He, in he interviews one member a month. And, uh, you know, that way we get to know our members a lot better and are able to, to figure out who does what and uh, who we should call when we have a problem with what, that kind of thing. Uh, we also have test flights. That's where our fighter pilot, Jeff Stadola, will uh, take an ad and shoot it down <laughs> and say, you know, here's what could be better about your headline. Here's what could be better about your graphics. Here's what could be better about your call to action other kinds of things. And that really saves a lot of people a lot of time and money at, because they're not publishing terrible ads. Friends don't let friends publish terrible ads, right? <laughs> True. Okay. We also have Brian Pilcher, who is our tech guru, uh, and he handles CRM, social media, analytics, any questions that people have. Uh, he's very, very smart and publishes our tech tips every Tuesday and also answers a lot of questions within that Facebook private group. So those are all uh, resources for you. We have a book club. This month, we're reading The Referral Engine by John Janch. Uh, if you've ever heard of duct tape marketing, John Janch is the guy behind duct tape marketing. So what we're doing is we're taking kind of a mass market um, business book or uh, marketing book, and we're breaking it down into here are the pieces of that book that are really helpful for aviation. So I send these out with like six bookmarks in each book uh, with some notes in there that say, you know, you should read this section and this section and this section. And those are the sections that we talk about um, in the Facebook private group and, and other places so that we um, are able to, to discuss those and, and work together on those. You also get office hours with our very smart John Williams. Uh, he's our MBA finance nerd and business development guy. Um, he's got a lot of business and finance experience that I don't, and, uh, is really helpful to a lot of our, uh, a lot of our clients. And of course with me, I do campaign strategy, organization, and copy and design. So any problems that you have with those things, we can work on during your office hours. All right. So that's kind of the basics of the masterclass. If you are a guest today and you'd like to join the masterclass, we'd love to have you um, at least try it, see what uh, what you think of it. And uh, we have some incentives for, for doing that. Um, and what we have are basically, if you sign up at the sil silver level or higher, we will work with you to create a three-step program for your new customers designed to get more testimonials and referrals. Um, and what that does is basically, you know, depending on your company, your budget, your um, customers and so on, it might be three emails. It might be two emails and a um, two emails and a postcard. It might be a customer appreciation event and two emails, you know, whatever that whatever form that takes. Those are things that we would be happy to to help you work with uh, as a new member. Sometimes it's hard to get started on your own, right? Yes. <clears throat> exactly. It's easier to, to modify something already rolling along. Exactly. So if you're not a member and you would like to become one, um, if you do that sometime in the next, I'll actually give you 10 minutes. Let's see if I can. There we go. Because we spent a lot of time on this, uh, on this webinar. But if you sign up at the silver level or higher within the next 10 minutes, then we will work on a three-step uh, phase three program for you. And we'll go from there. So just go ahead and go to aviationbusinessconsultants.com forward slash class. You can do that in another window and leave this one open so you can listen to us doing our, our Q&A. Um, and go ahead and fill out the form uh, at the silver level or higher, and we would be happy to, uh, to set that up for you. All right, so we'll take questions for the next 10 minutes and 12 seconds on anything that you want to talk about, whether that is phase three activities or whether that's the master class or whatever you have questions about. All right. Um, well, there's a couple here. Okay. When does the master class start and stop? Okay. Uh, the master class is actually ongoing. Um, we have a webinar each month. Um, our Facebook private group is open all the time, 24 seven. <laughs> 
uh, you may not get responses in the middle of the night, but we do have some folks from, from Turkey and from uh, Paris uh, who are up in the middle of the night. So it's not like a, a finite class that starts and stops. So you can join any time and you can drop out any time. Well, that answers the second question. How long is the guy committed for? Right. There is no commitment. Um, you know, if you join and you find out it's not for you, you can simply drop that at any time. Um, we'd like you to, to try it for at least a month. Um, come to at least a couple of webinars, uh, participate with the group, uh, you know, listen to the, uh, um, uh, the book club, you know, other kinds of things and see where it takes you. And just like any other group, you get out of it what you put in. So uh, there is no long-term commitment. And if you're not a good fit for the group, then uh, we would just as soon not have you, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Exactly. We've actually been really impressed with the people that are in the group. Um, they have been so helpful to each other. And in some cases, uh, we've had somebody who's selling a product and they need to talk to an airplane broker because they had some specific questions that only a broker would know. And uh one of our members just jumped up and offered his time, spent an hour with him, you know, straightening out his uh, his uh, sales presentation so that it, the language was correct for brokers and things. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of folks in that group that really take it seriously and that really enjoy helping other people. And those are the kind of folks that we're looking for, uh, people that give by getting or get by giving, right? True. Yeah. So next question is, how much does it cost? How much does it cost? Um, it is all detailed on the page. If you go to um, aviationbusinessconsultants.com forward slash class, there are three levels. So um, one is $79, and that is for basically access to our Facebook private group and to all of our webinars and recordings and archives and things like that. But you don't get... Um, hard copies of anything. So you don't get packages in the mail from me every month, which is always fun uh, with our book of the month and, and other kinds of things. You also don't get office hours. Um, office hours are probably the biggest bargain involved with the masterclass because you get John and my attention for an hour to work on anything you want to work on, right? That's true. And uh, which leads into another question up there on the screen is, what kinds of things can I do with office hours? Ah, okay. Um, to give you some examples of some of the things that we have done, we worked with someone on a call for speakers for the NBAA um, convention next November. Um, that was due in February. So uh, we spent a lot of time on that. Um, and that was actually really interesting because we had several members that have a similar problem. They're all working on um, aircraft maintenance software or technology. Uh, they are not competing with each other because they have a slightly different product that is has a different audience and purpose. But putting together kind of a buyer's guide to aircraft maintenance technology and an educational presentation was really good for all four of them, and you know, kind of split the cost and split the effort among the four of our clients that wanted to work on that project. So that was kind of cool. Um, other things that we've helped people with um, are like working on their phase three, working on a uh, helping plan a customer appreciation event. We have worked on an email sequence uh, for either up to a, a sale or after a sale. We worked on advertisements. We worked on calls to action that we're not getting any action. <laughs> when someone publishes an ad and it just doesn't get what they had hoped for out of it, a lot of times we can dissect that ad and do kind of a mini test flight uh, within an hour um, and you know figure out some suggestions that we'd have. Maybe it's placed in the wrong place. Maybe the headline just isn't attractive. Maybe it uh, doesn't have a way of tracking whether it is going to work or not. Um, so that's another thing that we can do. Other things we do during office hours, we've helped people put together um, new customer appreciation packages, uh, you know, brainstorm some ideas of, of things that they can put in there. Uh, we have 
evaluated people's websites. We've solved search engine optimization problems, uh, you know, investigated problems with shopping carts that don't work. <laughs> you know, basically any marketing problem that you have that can be solved in an hour or less, and you'd be amazed at what can be solved in an hour or less is what we'll do during those office hours. Well, that looks like, uh, no, wait, there's one. Okay. Um, is it appropriate for salespeople? Okay. Yeah. Very good question. We have several salespeople in the masterclass and I do have to say that some of our webinars are going to be more relevant than others, no matter what your, your role is in your organization. Um, there's going to be some that are just absolutely spot on, uh, this is something that I really need to know and something that I do every day. And there's going to be some things that are less relevant. So we try to do about a 50, 50 split between sales and marketing. Um, sometimes it doesn't end up quite being that much between sales and marketing, but since they're so connected and for marketing to be successful, sales has to be successful too. That's another thing we've done during office hours is role playing uh, with salespeople for an important sales call. You know, they're worried about what they're going to say when they get on the phone with somebody who has this particular question or problem. Um, John makes a fabulous skeptical customer and uh, does a really good job of role playing so that by the time they get on the phone with their actual customer, they feel really comfortable and confident because they've already been through all of the possible uh, objections and other things that that they could have. So, yes, salespeople are very welcome. And uh we have CEOs um, and founders of companies in the masterclass. We have inventors of um, components or software. We have um, marketing uh, folks, you know, basically marketing uh, coordinators, uh, people who are in the trenches doing these marketing tasks every day. We have people who are, you know, basically the CRM guru for their company. Uh, in the masterclass, all of these folks are kind of at different levels and coming at it from different perspectives, but we're all kind of equal uh, in this program because some people are going to have problems that other people can solve, which is really nice. Good to have that diversity. Well, I think that's probably all, unless we see anything else. All right. Okay. There's it's another... pretty close. We have uh, two minutes. <laughs> exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah, there was another question actually about, um, you know, what do you get with a masterclass that you don't get for free? You know, because we do offer a lot of our articles and some of our webinars and our podcasts are free. And of course, anybody can be in any of those at any time. But what you get with the masterclass that is not free, you get access to our Facebook private group, which is where a lot of those interactions take place. Um, you get invited to our book club discussions you get invited to our members only webinars, which is where the rubber really meets the road. And we go into detail about some of these things that we flew over at 50,000 feet today. Um, you also get um, transcripts, recordings, and handouts um, sent to you every month. A lot of our folks are um, uh, aviation people, so they travel a lot, of course. Um, some of them are airline people, so they're here for two weeks and off for two weeks, and they don't really know what their calendar is going to be and they're worried about missing a, a webinar or something like that, that is not a problem because they always get them in the mail and they can talk about them afterwards. Um, even if they have questions two weeks after we had a webinar, <clears throat> they can always post that as a comment in the Facebook group and we'll get back to them. Uh, and some other people in the class will also get back to them probably faster than we do because we've got, like I said, really fantastic people. Um, so, you know, that's what you get. And at different levels, we didn't talk about the gold level, which is basically our custom level. So if you have um, multiple people in your organization and you want these webinars adapted to your organization and you're using a specific CRM and you have a specific product, we basically adapt this and um, provide this kind of training. Uh, we'd be talking about your phase three using your technology, your product, your service, your sales staff, and all of those things. So, you know, that really saves even more time because it's very specific to you. So it looks like we're out of time and we are out of questions. So thank you if you've signed up. We really appreciate you being members and we uh, 
we'll see you on the other side. We look forward to, to welcoming you and introducing you around. Have a great day and uh, see you next time. Or a great evening, depending on where you are. Exactly. See you next time. You know you could.